Hey guys, Harry here. I'm back again with another Brit Lane vlog. Just having a nice Bud Light as usual. Uh, on a school night, obviously. You know how we roll. And um, it's just a bit more footage from the uh, nosebleeding fourth lift. I know there's quite a lot of parts to this, but I just got quite a bit of footage that I was when I was running in gables, you know, doing backs and fronts and stuff like that. So I was just just using it as footage to talk over it's not really anything to do with the lift obviously you can just see how I coped <laughs> for instance on these particular days I was I was working um, but if you've seen the last video obviously my my one and two gang is officially you know complete so I was talking about this for probably close to we're talking about it for months now I finally you know everyone's finally started um, everyone's in the process of getting the getting the CSCS cards, the UTR numbers, everything like that. So um, everything's more or less coming together. Uh, so uh, today's video, I haven't really got a topic, but I say that every every video I should make a T-shirt saying I haven't really got a topic. Uh, but I think I'm going to talk about um, something that you know is situational it's a hard thing to talk about but how to find the right uh, site when you're on price how to know if a site's worthy of working on price how to know you know if the company you work for is decent you know there is a lot of signs you can basically use and a few sort of pointers you can look out for that will give you a good sign uh, that you know a site's worth working on price I got this idea from watching Brit Layer's uh, TV interview with Charlie Collison and he talked he talked about a few mistakes he made when he first went on price and how old you should be when you first go on price or how many years experience etc and it sort of flooded me at my head with ideas and I know I've talked in passing about some of my mistakes when I was on price and some of uh, the red flags that I ignored when I was on price and my trials and tribulations with different gangs and I'm going to talk a little bit about why I work, um, why I always work as the leader of a gang or as a one and one or as a two and one. Uh, sorry, a one and two, shall I say now? Um, and the reason, you know, you know, the reason I do it, and you know, a few, a bit of my mentality behind it all, you know, because it's a difficult topic to talk about because there's very, there's a lot of variables, and everyone has their own experiences that vary from, you know, person to person. Um, but, you know, what we'll talk about to start with is, you know, how to find a decent site to work on price. And one of the biggest things that is sort of under, is undersold in a sense when it comes to, especially building houses when on price. Let's talk about um, domestic houses, shall I say, or housing sites. I, I'm sorry if I use some of these terms wrong, but housing sites anyway. Um because I've not worked on commercial I've never worked on commercial so I can't really give my opinion on that but let's say housing I'm not talking about private work or building your own houses for a, for a small build or anything just housing sites where you're either working direct to the house builder or through a subcontractor and you know how to know if you know a site's worth building or a housing company's you know worth starting on price is just having a look at the houses Go and having a walk around the site before you agree to start, or ringing up the subby if it's a subby, or ringing up uh, the you know the direct, you know uh, recruiter for like a direct Brit Lane you know firm, or if it's on uh, if it's an agency, it's normally you know day work, so you're gonna worry about what you know price there, but have a look at the houses and assess your own experience and your own skill to, towards those houses if they look fiddly you know and you've never built them before chances are you know you're probably not going to make much money on, at it um and you've got to really pick and choose the easier houses you've got to really pick and choose houses that you know might necessarily not look very interesting to build but it's when you're on price and you're trying to earn money it's not always about the most interesting houses it's not all about the nicest looking houses it's sometimes about just the easiest houses and you've got to sort of you know once you narrow down you know if 
a firm that you want to work for, whether it's Persimmon, Strata, Red Row, Avant, Taylor Wimpy, you know, whatever firm you want to work for, you know, you've got to narrow down, you know, that. For instance, you've got to, you've got to familiar, familiarise yourself with the firm, what sort of houses do they build, um, because obviously house building firms can vary from site to site. Some sites can be stone houses, some can be brick, some can be big houses, some can be small, some can be, you know, social houses. And you've got to sort of, you've got to sort of gauge what you prefer to build, what you've got the most experience building, what you find the easiest. And easy isn't bad. If you find a house easy to build, you're normally going to do it faster than a house you find hard to build. It's obviously common sense there, but it's something people under estimate they always think where's the work where's the work is there is there plenty of houses to go out and it, it doesn't matter if there's all the houses in the all the all, all the houses in the site to go out if they're dead hard if they're awkward if they've got loads of ins and out if, if they're not square you're probably not going to make much money at them and the second thing uh, to think about is price what's what are the rates they're paying and you'll normally notice if the rates seem good, too good to be true there's no there's normally a big drawback to the site whether it's uh, materials if it's uh, service with a forklift you know if you if people aren't getting good service or you know getting fed right there's probably an issue if the houses are very awkward and lot, you can't get a lot of bricks down the price is normally higher and for instance this site I went on um, you know the, we're getting 650 a thousand um, you know, I'm in the north of England in a sense, you know, I'm South Yorkshire, but obviously that's it, that's up north. And we're getting some of the highest prices around here on this site. And the reason why we're getting that is because of these concrete bricks. A lot of people don't like them, a lot of people struggle to lay them. And there is a lot of downsides to these concrete bricks. I've made the last video, the a couple of videos ago about our tips about laying them. You know, they're very situational, the, they're, a they're a struggle to lay at times, but luckily because I use pick and dip, because I'm hyper efficient, I try to be anyway, I'm probably slow compared to some people, but I try to be efficient, try to make life easy. I've managed to work with these bricks in a sense where I don't find them slowing me down too much. I admit I can't probably crash them up as easy as a, as a clay brick, but I don't have any trouble putting down the numbers in a sense. Uh, and I'm in a gang size that you know benefits making money, so I can work around the awkwardness sometimes of these bricks. And I always liked laying these years ago, but I have talked many a time when I used to work at Keepmo on price, and they were using these uh, you know Marshall bricks, whatever you want to call them. I think they're called Marshalls, the concrete bricks. And I never had any trouble with them. I never found them stressful to use or anything. So. Um, it's always preference as well. Some people have had really bad experience laying concretes. There is different types of concretes that can be, you know, more awkward to lay than others. But, you know, everyone has the preference. And for me, I'd, I always had a positive experience laying these. So, you know, it didn't put me off too much. And I could, and I found I could still make really good money even on, even with the sort of disadvantages of these concretes. So after you find the right price, after you you know find the right houses you want to build, then you've got to find out what the firms like you're working for. And obviously this can vary massively whoever you're working for. If you're working, I find if you work direct, you probably get maybe maybe slightly better than you do as a subby. But it comes down to you as a person and how you gel with a particular manager or a particular, you know, subcontractor who you're working for. Um, you know, there's some guys, some guys you're going to start for and, you know, you'll just get off on the wrong foot and, you know, you just might not see, see eye to eye and you might not gel well. And, it, you know, it's probably best, you know, walking at that point if you're not, if everything isn't going right, if your first drop isn't good you know you're not positive you know it, it, there is a lot of red flags but normally if the person you're working for you don't get you're not getting on with or you get having problems in the first week uh probably not a good sign but you've got to learn as well to have good people skills if you're wanting to go on price because a lot of the time you need to ask the right questions you need to you know bring up the right get find out the right information and a lot of the time just not asking the right questions can leave you in in a bit of a hard place when it comes to starting on a new site or we're for a new subby 
um, you know, you've got to really um, look at what you, you know, look at how you how you deal with people, and that is one of the biggest things I realised going on prices. My people skills had to improve from when I was twenty to now I'm twenty six. So you know, in them six years, I really worked on my people skills massively, and it's you know, it's done me a lot of favours. I can I can ring up, you know, a manager or whoever I'm dealing with on a particular piece of work. If I find something that I don't think's right or needs to be altered or I have a problem with, I can ring up and say, right, well, you know, this is, I've got this particular problem, you know, we, we need either pain to fix it or, you know, we, you know, basically finding a solute problem solving in a sense to make things work in your favor. And that is one thing you've got to realize on price. There's loads of variables, there's loads of things can go wrong. Especially if when you like I've done took over people's plots. Luckily, they've not been too bad. Luckily, I've been paid for any alterations I've had to make. I've asked the right questions, got on the right, uh, got off on the right foot. You know, produced good work, a higher standard than, you know, a lot of this, a lot of the brickwork around me, and I've shown, you know, this subby or the the site in general that I know what I'm doing. I'm not some chancer that. Obviously, you get in this climate with you know higher priced, inflated prices, um, because you know it's easy to say you you're a bricklayer, turn up with a brick box of tools and you know start laying. Don't mean you're a bricklayer. You know it's uh, it's just what happens when the prices become more desirable. Uh, but what I found um, is that you know if you if you're a good bricklayer, you know it shows in the first you know couple of couple of days whenever they look at your work you normally get trek right if you're decent but you've got to really emphasize um when you do start a new site you can prepare to be get you can't always expect the best work straight away if you especially if you start a new firm where, the, where there's gangs who have done more years than you or more months or you know done more favors in a sense uh where you can't always expect the best work like for instance myself probably got two shit starts Two shit plots to start with. Now I've got, you know, I've got my own plot now. Fresh, fresh start. You know, I've had to do a month and a half of, of crap work, or two about a month of crap work in total. If I added up all the all my weeks I've worked, and um, you know, now it's paid off. I'm on to a decent, you know. Uh, but that it won't necessarily happen. You know, it depends where you are, and you know, you've got to really, you've got to really gauge whether. You know, if you start somewhere and you've got to make sure you're being trekked right, appreciated, you know, everything, you know, and especially earning money as well. You know what I mean? It's it's all right, you know, to drop on a good site, easy houses, whatever, but you're just not earning the money for some reason. You can't get good forklift lifts, etc. cetera, um, which comes to my third point, forklift. You've got to make sure you're getting your gear, you know. I've mitigated this by being a smaller gang, you know, we're not we're not laying much more than six, seven, eight hundred bricks in a day. So if you can get a couple of tubs of gobbo, a couple of packs of bricks, you know, you, you're pretty much there. Four lifts a day, you know, you don't really need any more. Obviously you do essentially to get loaded out, but it you know, if you can get your lifts, you know, you're halfway there. And then management, you know, is the manager do you gel with the management? Are the management lenient? Are they strict? What's the site being run like? Is it organised? Is it disorganised? Is it relaxed? And you've got to really find what you prefer, you know. I'm not mega, mega, mega um, keen on working on sites where they're super strict because I know you can only be so neat. You can only get something so perfect. And when we're on price, you know, mistakes, little mini mistakes are going to be made. Little corners are going to be cut. Things are going to be forgotten. Um, so, you know, you've got to work on a site where they have realistic expectations You've also got to work on a site where all your materials are there. You know, stuff's organised to a point. You know, I'm not bothered if I've got to hunt around for lintels. I'm not bothered if I've got to hunt around for window formers. But I don't want the Gestapo inspecting my work every day and coming up on the scaffold. You know, I want a relaxed site. I don't want um, to work on a site where they're going for awards. That's normally a bad sign. You're not probably going to earn much money there. And you've got to make sure that, you know, that the management realise or whoever you're working for realises, you know, they don't have to keep an eye on you, that you're a decent gang and, you know, realises, you know, what sort of gang you are 
and it will influence the type of work they put you on. You know, if you're a slower gang, you normally get the shitter, shitter drops. Um, if you're a pushover and you just say yes to everything, you'll normally get, you know, to pick up all the shit. And you've got to realise what you're worth. And you know what I mean? You've got to, if you don't agree with something, just say no, it's not happening. You know, there is a lot of things um, you got to take into consideration. But and that's probably the third and fourth thing that I'd think about when you're starting on a price site. And number f- number five, if you'd say, for at point five, you've got to realise, you know, you're in the right gang size, you know. Uh, does the site, you know, are they happy with you working in the gang size you're in? Some sites aren't, some sites are. Um, and is it the right environment for you, you know? D- you know, some sites, you know, they just have a shit environment, you know? The, you know, the people on it are, cra- are shit, people are miserable. It's not always sometimes a good site, you get bad vibes. But, you know, it is, it is something to think about there. Um... So yeah, that's my five, six points of how to find a decent site. Oh, as well, number seven, weekly pay. Don't ever go for monthly pay. Don't go for fortnightly pay, nothing but weekly. Weekly pay is the best way to where you make sure you're always going to get paid. The employer doesn't have too many days of money on you. Um, You can manage your money a lot better getting paid weekly. I know some people can't control themselves and end up spending it, but you know, weekly pay and it's not for the point of you know because you can't go a month without getting paid it's because you the firm you're working for doesn't have a month's money on you you know you want to make sure you're getting paid weekly you're not leaving too much on you know in the subcontract subcontractor's pocket or you know the pocket of the firm and you've got to make sure you're getting paid correctly it needs to be to the penny no more no more no less what you're booking needs to be correct. You need to learn how to do a proper invoice, which I'm going to talk about in a future video. I'm going to make a video. I keep saying I'm going to make it. Everyone wants to see that how to book in video. Um, but you need to book in clear and concise. You need to ask them how they want the booking in sending. If it by email, is it by text? And you've got to itemize everything. Your plot numbers, your, either your measure or your price, what you're working to. You've got to make sure your price works out to the measure. You've got to make sure the site name's correct, the date's correct if you're booking in. You've got to make sure you have got the plot number, the, the, the right plot name. And you've got to, if you're working off of a measure, you know, the right amount of bricks and blocks. Or if you're working off of a price, it's correct to the price that you're working to. Um, but yeah, they're just a few things, um, you know, to look for when you're starting on a new price site. Uh, there's more things I could talk talk about, so I'll probably go into more detail next video. Um, but I'm just running out of footage now, so I didn't want to ramble on forever. So there's a lot of things to think about, but it's worth, you know, working on price if you're fast enough, if you're competent enough, and if you want to be rewarded for your efforts. Day work can be monotonous, it can drag you can feel like you're spinning your wheels, whereas on price, there is a risk and reward to it. Yeah, I'm not necessarily saying you're gonna earn more on price than you would on day work, and I'm not necessarily saying you can earn, you won't earn as much on day work, but it is circumstantial, and you know, uh, there is a lot of things to think about. Uh, I find life more interesting on price. I've worked doing remedials on day work a lot, for a lot of months, a lot of weeks, and I just find it, I get miserable, I feel miserable. Um, I might be not much better off on price some some years, but other years, you know, it really shows. So anyway, so anyway, guys, thanks a lot for watching. Hope you enjoyed some of this footage. Um, I hope you enjoyed the topic. I'm going to do a bit more, go into a bit more detail with the booking. I know I touched on it a little bit there, but it's something that I know a lot of people want to know. A lot of people struggle with the admin side and the invoice side of things. And it can really make the difference between getting paid correctly and getting paid incorrectly. So anyway, guys, thank you very much for watching. I'm going to enjoy my beer and I'll see you guys in the next video.